All right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is Thursday, January 18th. And man, I had a lot of drinking over the last week, man. I forgot to even talk about the best of tasting here. 50 wines here at the store. Oh, I, I probably shouldn't say anything about that. It was a sold out, so there's people that didn't make it probably going to be pissed. No, but uh, always a very successful event, something you should make reservations a full week or more in advance, but a great event. Thank you all the suppliers who came and poured at our best of tasting almost a week ago now. Wow. But uh, that's how things go here at the Wine Watch. Seems to be on fast forward. That's the way you learn about wine. You've got to drink a lot of it. And uh, Steve Sink stopped in with a few wines that I forgot to mention. Our, uh, I think this was like Saturday last week or whenever Steve stopped by, but I don't even think it was this week. A few things. One of them was a uh, wine from Validoris, a Gadeo from Avantia. Really nice little wine, some zesty lime and lemon citrus fruit, wet stone-like minerality in the Nose, very bright with hints of kind of green peppercorn, but lovely intensity on the palate. Really nice texture, kind of whole milk for a wine from this region. Usually they're a little lighter, but uh, really nice wine and, uh, well, $33, man. Usually stuff in this area is pretty cheap, too. So a really nice little uh, uh, wine from the north of Spain, from Galicia. And then next up, a wine from Emilio Moro, uh, the Ribeiro del Duero, 2007. Uh, really nice wine. I haven't had too much from 07. But this wine, always good, maybe a little lighter in style than it usually is. Uh, this wine always kind of over delivers. But lovely ripe strawberry and wild berry fruit with notes of sweet tobacco. Hint of raw steak to the bouquet. Kind of a hint of, uh, that's one of the things you get from wines from Ribeiro del Duero to me. Bright red berry fruit on the tongue with a nice amount of zesty uh, uh, acidity. A bit lean, like I said, but still nicely balanced. And uh, a lighter, more savory Moro from uh, Mio Moro. All right, next up, uh, hey man, we had three wines sneak into the tasting that very few people knew about Saturday night. The 2006, the premiere of the 2006 Brunello Montalcinos. Three of my favorite producers. Uh, thank you very much, um, Luigi, for bringing them by. Some great stuff and uh, maybe a little bit too young to evaluate even for professional tasters, but uh, I let them open a day and tried them the second day uh, after they were open and really nice. Canelico de Sopra to me always offers a more old world style wine, dried herbs, and you really notice a little bit of that black tar that you get out of uh, wines from Montalcino, Brunello, but lovely red berry fruit and a little bit of licorice spice to this wine also, and a really nice classic old world style Brunello, and to me always shows fairly nice on the, when, when it's released. The Castello di Roma Torrio may be a little more backwards and closed, definitely, but had some lovely fruit also in this one, some distinct Tuscan terroir and some nice leather saddle kind of nuance to it. Fresh berries on the tongue, firm tannins and a real long finish. Like I said, a little hard to evaluate by themselves, maybe better with a steak or something like that, but uh, really big wines, both of these wines. 06 is being touted as the next latest and greatest vintage from Montalcino. All right, the Baldi Cava. Hey, this is the powerhouse wine from Montalcino, and huge intensity here, crushed raspberries, wild strawberry jam-like fruit on the nose, raw meat, fine herbs, uh, big and chewy on the tongue with really dry tannins right now. This is a wine that always needs a little time, but has everything, all the nuance that you expect from Brunello de Montalcino, and uh, definitely over delivers, but uh, like I said, a baby at this point. Most excellent though, definitely the best of the three, I think. And uh, the Castello de Romatorio, a close second. And uh, the Canalicchio, maybe for those of you that like a lighter style Brunello, but uh, always delicious. All right, next up, we had a little Luigi Bosca wine to start this week out. And uh, some good stuff. This uh, Bosca de Sangre and the uh, Finca La Linda Malbec Syrah. The Malbec Syrah, kind of a step up from the La Linda Malbec to me. A little brighter intensity from that Syrah in there. A little more forward, a little more jammy. Really nice little value. Everything in this Luigi Bosca lineup. And then the Bosca de Sangre, which is the same price range as the DOC. Uh, Malbec, uh, this wine had some lovely ripe plummy jammy fruit with notes of toasty oak spice and brown spices there. Big and chewy on the tongue with lots of black fruit on the finish and a really nice hand of toasty oak too. Uh, maybe more commercial in style than uh, some of the other uh, Malbecs, but uh, Luigi Bosca has always, to me, been a great uh, value-oriented lineup. All right, and then the Gala 4 wine, which uh, had some really dark, intense black and blueberry liqueur-like fruit uh, with some balsamic nuance on the nose, uh, a little bit of that vanilla spice and violet 
Uh, really nice little wine. Definitely a step up from almost everything else that I've had in that Luigi Bosca lineup. Uh, if you like that darker berry fruit in your wine. All right, next up we had a new producer in, or a new uh, importer in rather, that uh, just focuses on Brunello de Montalcino. So uh, we like people that focus on specific areas. I find they bring you really unique and interesting wines, and usually a step above and usually a little more expensive than um, the big companies, but uh, a lot of times worth it. 2004 Poggio Antico, Brunello Reserva. This is one of the great producers from uh, Montalcino. I have no idea why. Um, Jack served this wine first. Uh, really intense bouquet on the nose, dried mushrooms, old leather, wild strawberry fruit. I mean, a wonderful intensity. 04 is a phenomenal vintage in Montalcino and one that's drinking nicely now, but definitely has some uh, legs on it and it'll last a long time in your cellar. This is one that needs a little bit of time. Very concentrated, very rich, and uh, a lot of potential here. Next up, we serve the Altero, which the Altero is a step down to me, in price and in concentration and richness, this is their single vineyard wine, maybe a bit more rustic on the nose, good hand of fresh plowed earth and dried porcinis and dark spices. But uh, like I said, it's kind of tough to serve the best wine for, hey, wait a minute, don't I always say drink the good wine first? But uh, when you're tasting wines, you usually have a progression from lighter to heavier. Uh, the Cupano is next, and this is a wine I have had some requests for, and uh, I've only had a few times, but a classic Brunello had a lot of that tar and black earth and spices and dried flowers to it. Lovely intensity, uh, licorice and black earth showing on the tongue with uh, excellent structure, and again, this 04 vintage, a phenomenal vintage, and uh, this wine is pretty expensive, $142, but damn good. One of the best Brunellos from 04 that I've had. Really nice. The San Polino Brunello. Uh, this is a nice little wine, but man, it was quite a bit lighter than the first three. So uh, hard for me to get real excited about this at this point in the review coming down the line up here. But a classic style wine, some old southern saddle leather, red berry fruit, a nice hand of earth and licorice spice here as well with some floral notes and lovely freshness on the finish from 05, not quite as intense as these 04s. And then the Pietro Nera, which is a Centolani property. And this is a nice Brunello producer, 04, had quite a bit of more savory kind of earthy notes to it, herbs, dry cherry, uh, mushroom, and red plum and dusty earth on the nose. And uh, really well balanced, a little bit of tan showing on the finish, which, uh, you know, this wine just needs a little time. A lot of these 04s need a little time. They're big wines. Okay, and then uh, we had Sandy Belcher and John Arns in, and uh, these are great wines, man. I'd forgotten how good these wines are. You know, it's it's amazing to think that these guys make 500 cases of wine. Their their vineyard is located just below the uh, Howell Mountain Appalachian, so you get some of that mountain fruit. And these wines are still under a hundred dollars a bottle. The price has been 50 to 75 dollars ever since I remember buying Arns. And uh, like I said, um, you know, Sandy is one of the more traveled winemakers that you meet. We always talk about her travels down to Australia. And, you know, she's a very, you know, accomplished winemaker in her own right, having worked with some of the greatest minds in the wine business through her years. And I'm always impressed with these wines. The 05, 06, and 07 vintage we had uh, today. And you really notice the vintage difference in these wines. 05 and 07, really classically fashioned vintages. Uh, the 06, a lot more forward and a lot more jammy in style. And, uh, you know, the, the, the wines maybe had a little bit of travel shock to them, too, you know. I'm so familiar with these wines, and I like the style of it. They're not overblown. They're not overly oaky. They maybe tasted a little bit on the earthy side on this day. And uh, without knowing them very well, you might have mistaken them for just being a little off. Um, but like I said, they were great stuff, greatly balanced. Check out the reviews on these. And the Vinoche Sauvignon Blanc which uh, Jim DiStefano, he's representing these wines. This is his own winery in Napa Valley, 100% from Pope Valley, and some nice melon and grapefruit, citrus fruit here with a hint of fresh baled hay, and uh, really nice and clean on the tongue, leaves the palate refreshed and looking for something to eat. That's one of the things I love about Sauvignon Blanc. And hey, that's what I had to drink yesterday. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.